What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to GMI's World Podcast, and we're going to be wrapping up week 10 of the 2019 NFL season with Monday Night Football, NFC West, 49ers undefeated, the Seahawks, everybody's blood was pumping, dudes was talking crazy crap, the 49ers were, you know, riding high, everybody was looking good, they came out crazy, 10-0 in the first quarter, but then, obviously, we know how it ended off, Um, you know, the Seattle Seahawks battled back, overtime, field goal, game over, but let's go ahead and break down some of the things Um, Because what happens is people, you know, Russell Wilson didn't really have a crazy like stat line. Um, But it's usually the way that this guy is able to make plays when it matters the most. Um, You know, he had a pick, he had a uh, he had a pick and he had a touchdown, right? Had a few rushing yards, whatever. It wasn't anything spectacular. It wasn't Lamar Jackson, Lamar Jackson esque. Uh, as what we saw against the Bengals, but obviously it's not going to be that way because the 49ers are a much better team than the Bengals. So, you know, as I'm watching the game, I'm, I'm, tr- I'm trying to figure, like, in the beginning, I thought, you know what? 49ers are looking really, really good. It looks like they're the team that's going to, you know, they're going to be the, have to be the team that's going to have to be beat. Uh, people are going to be talking about them, et cetera, et cetera. Then all of a sudden, they don't score for two quarters, and you're like, okay, you know what I'm saying? These dudes right here, dog, like, what is going on at this point exactly? And then obviously they battle back in the fourth, goes to OT, and then they lose the kicker. Uh, Seattle Seahawks kicker uh, kind of nails it um, and just destroys their world of the undefeated season. But we're going to talk about why that actually helps the 49ers uh, going forward in a second. But I just want to go ahead and we're going to dissect some of the things that are going on with the Seahawks. Now, first of all, Josh Gordon, um, the slant play was a key play right there for that game, uh, gave them a first down. Uh, really quickly about Josh Gordon, I don't know exactly what's going on with him, but it seems pretty weird that the Patriots would release him and then this guy passes his physical and he's already ready to play for the Seahawks. Unless for some reason he's going to be getting some leeway on another team. Like, I I don't understand what's going on with him, but obviously he's not the Josh Gordon that he was when he was with the Browns and just fly, you know, doing whatever he wanted, um, you know, early in his career. Uh, Whether whether it's something, I I don't know. I just don't understand because if he is healthy like this and, and able to play, wouldn't you want to stay with Tom Brady? It just seems way off. I was just thinking that the whole entire game when I saw him, like, yo, what is this guy doing? I don't know if you guys are doing the same thing. Um, I do think that it, it's going to help eventually if he's able to step up to the plate because DK Metcalf is the real deal. Uh, obviously, last night, it wasn't that situation. Again, 49ers defense is a very, very tough defense. So regardless of what anybody is saying about the team, it's not like, oh, my God, they're not good. No. Some parts of the game, their offense, you know, like, yo, where was the offense? But defensively, I think they battled as much as they could with a guy like Russell Wilson because we know he's going to make plays. And that's the thing that people have to understand. Certain players are going to make plays no matter who's out there. For those of you guys that got to see Jordan play, you know, Shaq, Kobe, uh, these guys, they're going to make plays no matter what the game plan is. You know what I'm saying? Currently, about our generation that we're watching right now, LeBron James. Now, you may say he doesn't have the clutch factor, whatever like that. When that young man was, you know, coming into the league and, you know, dominant, he was unbelievably dominant. It didn't matter what was going to happen. Well, he, he brought a team that I, I don't know who was on the team uh, with the uh, Cavaliers uh, to, the, uh, to the finals. So, you know, certain players are just unstoppable. And Russell Wilson, when you least expect it, is going to make a play. And that's pretty much what happened to the 49ers. That like, if, you, if you're if you a 49er fan right now, you're like, yo, this dude Russell Wilson, though. Like, why is this guy always escaping? Like, you know what I'm saying? It's ridiculous, but that's what he does. Now, let's talk about the fact that the 49ers, uh, they're going to be a defensively based team. We want to believe that Garoppolo can be the Garoppolo of the games that we saw when he was astounding and ridiculous and the reasoning behind why Bill, Bill Belichick was ready to move on from Tom Brady. Will we get that consistently? From Garoppolo, I don't know. Okay, obviously, like I said, Belichick. People like to bring back his days with the Browns when he wasn't winning and stuff like that. They seem to forget what he was doing with the Giants um, when he won a Super Bowl there. But anyway, um, they they seem to not understand that once he was able to go ahead and see what Tom Brady's stats and his traits were, he's a very very insightful individual. I think he saw in Garoppolo a lot of the things that he saw in Tom Brady early. And I don't know when we're going to get that development, but you can see that Garoppolo has the skill set. So you can't be, um, I, I don't want people to feel like, oh my God, you know, we're out on him, whatever. No, this dude Clowney was doing whatever he wants, okay? People seem to not recognize, and I don't understand why I have to have to uh, constantly remind people. 
when dudes are in your face all the time, do, do me a favor, if all you guys are just sitting around and you don't understand how this actually works, just stand in a, in a single spot and have like a bunch of kids or whatever, like a bunch of animals just bombard you, just, just run at you. No matter what happens, it's gonna make you be off of you know what I'm saying? Your actual point of origin. Like you have to make a decision. It still flusters you regardless of what's going on. But these are big men that possibly are injecting horse steroids into their butt cheeks that are running at you at this fast speed and you gotta make a decision. I'm talking about little cuddly dogs, you know, maybe a couple little babies, whatever, you know, like a lot of little kids running at you. It's, it's, it's like a, you know, your kid's birthday party, everybody's having fun or whatever. It still affects you with the way that you move around and you know, Clowney was on all night last night. So people have to real, I, I understand that these guys are professional athletes, but it's all about game planning. And then sometimes when it works out like this, game planning has to be thrown out the window and people have to be able to make a play. And it's just it just so happens that Russell Wilson was able to make the play at the end that, you know, helped to secure the victory. And that's all he's been doing, which is why I'm saying right now for MVP, you, you gotta look at Russell Wilson. Like Lamar Jackson is playing out of his mind, but Russell Wilson is just right there, bro. Like he, like every single game is just like, this guy is just doing wild things, man. You know what I'm saying? Like what's happening right now? He's able to make these plays consistently over and over again. Um, he's one of those guys that, like I said, to beat Richard Sherman was probably a huge thing because all that stuff with the Legion of Boom and everybody feeling like Russell Wilson was that little golden boy and stuff like that. It's a reason why they chose him over the Legion of Boom. You know, and, and we're starting to see it right now. Ultimately, um, they're gonna have to rebuild a little bit more, but having Clowney on that team, I told you guys, once he got traded there, they have a lot of potential, but that's gonna be a heavyweight battle. And I told you guys this four or five weeks ago, it's gonna be the, it's gonna be the Seahawks and it's gonna be the 49ers. One of those teams is probably going to the Super Bowl. Like I, I told you guys that, but then you got, oh bro, the Saints, 504. Bro, are you serious? Do you see what the Falcons just did to your Saints dog? And the Falcons absolutely suck. Their quarterback is probably one of the worst ever. And then you guys are gonna tell me his stats. I don't care about his stats. Just let me know what happened with 28 to three and how that ended for you guys. But that's not what this is about because you guys got me off track. All you guys that are talking about the Falcons right now in the comments, you the ones that got me off track. The bottom line is, I think at this point, Russell Wilson has made himself eligible as the front runner for the MVP. This was a very, very impressive win regardless of how nip tuck it was because again, the 49ers are still a very, very good team. I don't care what anybody says. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they had some bad offensive uh, quarters. Whatever. They're still one of the best teams in the league, if not the best still, even with that loss. Because if everybody is up and running, Garoppolo, is the, he's the guy. He's that guy that's going to change life for them. If he's able to play halfway decent, people are not going to beat this team in the playoffs. I just want you guys to know that. Because defensively, they're going to be with everybody. So if Garoppolo is able to go out there and say, you know what? I don't even care no more, dog. I'm coming out here and averaging 21, uh, 28. 49ers ain't giving up points like this every week. I, I can promise you that. Watching the game, I saw it. Like, every single game that I've seen them win, they do things that it's like, all right, they, you know, they're gaining their chemistry, they're getting a lot better. So this is what excites me as we get closer to January because we know that these teams are going to be out there, dog. We already know what's going to be happening. So um, just, just being able, just for Russell Wilson being able to take this team down was a huge feat in my opinion. I think this is... Like, it's an undefeated team. The same way Lamar Jackson beat the Patriots the week before. But in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, the 49ers have a, I think they were better defensively, even though, you know, the Patriots are like souping up stats and all that stuff, playing trash teams. I think the 49ers were a better defense. Obviously, I would take Tom Brady at this point over Garoppolo. But it was a very, very good win. Um, you know, going forward, I just... I just want to see Josh Gordon just stay off the weed for a little bit and try to help this team win a Super Bowl because I think that that would help ease the pain and everything that went on with the Legion of Boom and, you know, uh, Sherman, you know, leaving whatever. Like, it, it's all crazy, but sometimes people get way too emotional and it has to come down to business. And, um, you know, the way it ended for Richard Sherman, I'm sure that he's still not happy about it. And I'm sure that he's very, very upset that he lost to Russell Wilson. Uh, but it is what it is. And I think that at the end of the day, um, you know, the Seahawks are going to be a major threat in the NFC West going forward. And I think it's between these two teams, um, you know, ultimately who's going to be representing the NFC in the Super Bowl. I want to thank you guys and girls for watching. Definitely stay tuned. Make sure you guys are downloading the iTunes app, G Myers World. Well, it's on I the iTunes podcast, G Myers World podcast. Um, we, we have Android, iHeartRadio, Spotify. 
Definitely go ahead and download it for free on the go. I'm gonna see you guys and girls next time. One love.